Okay, I'm going to try to record this and actually have my voice uh, show up this time. This is about the third time I've recorded it. But I want to give you a little help on how to cite your sources whenever you uh, start doing this for your uh, ecological scavenger hunt. So uh, we're going to use APA. So here's the uh, guide that I have. Oops, that's the conclusion of the guide I have for APA. And of course, it doesn't want to work. Hold on just a second and we'll get it fixed. Let's start at slide one. That would be awesome. All right. So, first off, there are people who know a lot more about this than I do. So, uh, one thing to do after you've listened to this, uh, you can put it together, but you can also go to these two websites to help you out. Uh, Purdue Owl, uh, the APA format is at the web address right here, or you can just uh, Google it. It will show up. It is very popular. And uh, they have several resources. They have oodles of information that they'll just beat you to death with this. Now, uh, they also have little video casts and a YouTube channel. So if you listen to this and uh, you don't quite understand how to do it, this is the first place you're going to want to go to uh, investigate a little further. Now, the other site that I'm going to talk about in just a minute is called Son of Citation Machine. Now, this is a good resource. Uh, it's got a couple little tricks that are very handy, but it is one that you need to use with a little bit of caution because it can give you some errors if you don't double check. So, uh, first off, why do we cite? Well, whenever you use information that didn't originally belong to you, you need to give credit to the people who did it because in some cases they've spent months or even years of research uh, to put this together. And uh, you wouldn't like it if somebody took credit for something that you spent that much time on. And they are going to be very, very unamused if you do the same. Uh, give them the credit where credit's due. They worked hard on it. Now, uh, we're going to use APA. Now, some of you may have done some MLA papers before. Uh, it's a different type of uh, citation style. But uh, APA was developed by the American Psychology Association, and a lot of sciences use it whenever they do research. And just for your information, it's, we're going to use the 6th edition. That's what's on Purdue Owl, and that's what's on Son of Citation Machine. It's the newest uh, revision of it to come out. And uh, so when you look for this uh, and you, when you want to double check, if you double check anything other than these sites, make sure it's 6th edition or it might lead you a little bit astray. So to the nitty gritty, the APA template, there are many, many, many more formats than this, but these are the three most popular ones that you'll be using. So, and this is just a template of basics of how to put this in to plug in what you need. So for journal articles, uh, you list the authors first in alphabetical order, last name, comma, then their initials, and you put a comma in between each author, and then after the last set of initials, put a period, and then in parentheses, put the year it was published, and then a period afterwards. After that, you write the title of the article. You only have to capitalize the first letter of the first word, and the first letter of any word, uh, first word after a colon. Uh, at the end of that goes a period. Then put list the title of the periodical, the volume number, and the issue number, in parentheses, and the pages. Now the only thing this doesn't show is the title of the periodical needs to be in italics when you do it. Now books are set up much the same way, except uh, they have the authors, and if there's more than one author, it's going to look just like the journal articles one, and year of publication in the parentheses. Then the title of the work, and if there is a subtitle, you know, colon with the subtitle below it. Make sure you capitalize the first letter of the first word in a subtitle too. Then a period. Then put the location it was published with a colon and the publisher. Okay. Uh, for online resources, which are going to be what you use the most probably, and at least if you're uh, an indication of any past classes, they're pretty easy to put together. The hardest part is finding these things on the website. Authors first. Make sure in alphabetical order, do last name, comma, initials. Okay. Then, in parentheses, put the date of the publication. It's usually at the bottom of the web page is where you can find out where it is. So say copyright this date or say what day it's published with a period afterwards. Then write the title of the document, just whatever it says the title of the web page is uh, or whatever it says the title is at the beginning of the article on the web page. Then, period, and write retrieved from and then put your email address in there. If you're using Word and not just writing this out, just cut and paste the web address exactly how it is on the page that you get to. Uh, you want to make sure it's a web page that you can get back to. So don't like give me the Google search uh, results that you used. So this is one way. Make sure you actually click on a web page that you use. Don't just get the information out of the little Google uh, teaser that tells you what's on the web page. Okay, another option that you have 
is using Son of Citation Machine. Now, I would advise you use this, but only after you've put a couple of these together and know kind of how they, they are set up, because you do need to double check your work if you use this one. But you go to the website, choose APA 6 edition. It's on the left hand side. There's a couple of options. Click it so it'll take you to the right uh, citation method because there are several. Now uh, then you pick the type of resource you're documenting. If it's a book, click book. If it's a web page, click web page. If it's a newspaper, click newspaper and so forth. Then it's going to give you a set of blanks to fill in and you want to type your information from the site or the book or the article exactly how it's written uh, on your site and fill in the blanks. Then after you've filled in all the blanks, you click Make Citation, and it will make you the citation for you to cut and paste into the Works Cited page. But double check, because sometimes they do little mess ups and flubs, and they take shortcuts that you're not really allowed to do. Now, on this, on a side note, uh, whichever option that you use, make sure that you're providing all the information you possibly can. I know you'll probably run into a site or two where you can't find everything you need for the citation. Put everything in it you can, and then put it like that. Do not just list the web addresses if you get frustrated. Go ahead and put it in the citation format. If there's a couple of holes, then we'll deal with that fact and I'll help you figure out how to fill those in. But if you just give me a list of web addresses, I'm going to think you did not try and I'm going to take off more points than if you try and just don't do ex an exemplary job. Now, um, when you type this page, you can write it if you don't have access to a uh, Word or a computer program, a word processor, it's okay. But I'm going to show you for when you do these later on. So you'll go ahead and know how to put them into Word. And if you have Word but you do not have a printer, as long as you give it to me before uh, the due date, I do not mind printing out your Works Cited page as long as you tell me, you know, whose it is so I'll know who's sending my, me the stuff. So, but first off, list your citations, put them all into the same font size, and type. I know that sounds kind of elementary, but you'd be surprised how many people forget this. Then, to give them that hanging indentation that they need, this is how you do it. In Word, go to the page layout section, either a tab if it's the new version of Word or it's under one of the menu bars, and open the uh, paragraph part of the menu. Now, uh, that little box pops up and there's a section called indentation, and you go to the part that says special, and there's a little scroll down, and highlight hanging then uh, this should set up your page. Now if it doesn't, if it still looks really weird, uh, highlight your citations one at a time and go into paragraph and give it a hanging indentation because that can also work. Sometimes Word decides it wants to autocorrect and doesn't do this quite right. So if you just do each one individually, if it doesn't show up right the first time, it will do it correctly the next time. Now uh, if you follow these steps, you should end up with a really professional looking work size, cited page that would be accepted in any class. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask me, you can email me, or you can ask me during class. Uh, email might work a little bit better just so I can navigate the site, maybe do some screen captures to help you out on this. But don't hesitate to use these web pages again and again and again. Bookmark them on your computer. You will need to use them for years to come, trust me. And the even better part is that MLA for your English papers, there's information on both of these sites about how to do those too. So this is a site you can use not only for my class but for other classes you're going to have to write papers in. So hopefully this will help you out a little bit and give you a little insight. If nothing else it will help you because it's got some web addresses listed. I will also post those when I post this on YouTube so that you can click on them that way too. So hopefully you can get this page done and look very professional and amaze myself, Miss Wheeler, and all your friends. Goodbye!